Right, so we're back from the Northern Territory. Well, since Northern Territory, I've been to New Zealand as well on an epic Ford event, which will be coming up um, on the channel very shortly. So today's video is about the Starlink update and how it performed when we're away in the Northern Territory. So I'm gonna go through all the pros and cons, uh, the speeds that we were getting, and just everything in general that surrounds that whole modification that I did uh, to put it in the star mount and mount it on top of the F-250. So there's a lot of people that actually DM me on Instagram, also commented on the Starlink modification video. And basically I'm gonna get down to why I did it. So the reason why I cut the dish down and mounted it permanently on the roof is because on our Fraser Island trip, we were dragging the cable through the sand and there was all salt on it. I, we kept having to set it up like each time we were moving location and it kind of just become a bit of a pain in the neck. It was also chewing more power than what I wanted to use. Um, I would have rather it to be on 12 volt. So they're kind of the reasons why I wanted to flat mount it and I just didn't want the hassle of having to set it up and that way I had just the, the truck just now admits Wi-Fi whenever you're around the truck. It's just, it just has Wi-Fi. So, well, whenever Starlink's actually powered on. So I have the unit powered down right now and I have the subscription off at the moment because we've just gotten back home and I don't need to have it on at the moment. So that's kind of the reasons why I did the modification. So some of the speeds that we were getting uh, range between 50 megabits um, right up to 120. There was one peak uh, in the desert where we actually got up to 150 and that was, that was pretty incredible. So for everything I need to do, whether it's um, Instagram uploads for my stories or videos or just uploading to YouTube, any of that sort of stuff, the modification of having it flat mounted didn't hinder me at all. We never lost internet the whole trip, all the way from Newcastle in New South Wales, right through out back New South Wales, into South Australia. We went from Port Augusta back up into the Northern Territory, did all the middle of the Northern Territory, come back down into South Australia through Mount Dare and down through Udnadatta. Now, yes, there's been some argument on that video that I did of modifying it, that it's now not directional so the mo obviously the motor can't it doesn't have a motor in it anymore it can't move and point south and like they're designed to but i think now with the coverage of the satellites that that we have it didn't hinder what i want to do at all the the downfall of of having slightly lower speeds because of it's because it not being now directional i think the pros of having it flat mounted completely outweighed that for me personally, may not for other people, they may want fast internet and that's fine, horses for courses, whatever you wanna do. But for me, the flat mount outweighed the little bit of less speed that I may be getting instead of having it uh, not, not cut up and not mounted flat. So I think this, having it flat mounted was way better. Um, yes, it does work in motion. It was working in motion when we were driving. Um, you're not supposed to use it in that application. I did test it to see if it did work. And yes, it was working in motion. And I think the test that I got was um, when we're going through South Australia and it was like 91 megabits a second. But to not lose internet that whole period was, was pretty awesome. There's been a few other guys that have done the modification. Luke from Drifter 4 Wheel Drive has done his mod on his. I'm not too sure of the case that he has. I think it's from a guy here in Australia. Uh, Luke was mentioning that he had to kind of face the truck south and thing. I didn't find that to be an issue with mine. I just parked the truck however I wanted to park it and just, just had internet. So I didn't have any of those sorts of problems. Again, the, the mount isn't cheap. Uh, all the costings, I'll have everything in the description if you want to see how much the mount is and, and all the rest of it. So I'll give you a look at the mount. So here it is on the roof, just here. So you can get the mount, the black part here, which is, um, which is metal. You can get that in either black or white. So it really depends on what you want. Uh, the perspex here is like a tinted perspex. So it's not, it's not actually black, it's just tinted. And then this is the quick mount. So all you do is remove these two screws here at the front, uh, the two Allen head screws. And now I can actually slide the whole dish out of the mount off the roof rack if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to store it, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Uh, and then just the base stays mounted to the roof rack itself. So 
you do have an ethernet cable just there you can plug in and there's the 12 volt where the 12 volt goes into it just there i've just got the cable just sitting up here so i've got to take it off the roof and just mount it in the shed because i don't really need it up there right now a couple of questions about would it overheat due to the due to it being black i don't really think so i don't think that's going to be an issue around the roof rack there there's plenty of ventilation for that in the description i'll also put a link to the starlink satellite tracker so you can actually see where the satellites are so what i was doing is i was waiting for a satellite to cross over us and then i was jumping on and doing a speed test and i definitely noticed the difference of when the satellite was directly above us versus when there was kind of nothing around us and they were a few hundred kilometers away uh, so yeah there was definitely a difference there but you can actually see all the Starlink satellites that are around the Earth in real time and, and how they're moving. So, and it's pretty cool just in NZ a week ago, actually going up to the Southern Hemisphere Proving Ground, the, uh, one of the boys had never seen the Starlink satellites before and there was a massive stream of them going across across between the mountains and it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, performance wise, everything I need to do and everything my missus needs to do work great so for us personally we were getting up to about 100 megabits a second with it flat mounted again we had a few peaks of 150 140 when the satellites were crossing directly over us but for everything we need to do voice calls video calls um, sending emails social media it worked perfectly just having it mounted on the truck is just so much more convenient than having to drag it out and put it here there or everywhere but you can get the higher versions of starlink for in motion high speed internet use i think the hardware is over three thousand dollars but so you can get the the hardware and then the subscriptions like 300 and something dollars a month so all the starlink specs are all on their website if you want to check out all the different versions they have but this was probably one of the best mods that we actually did for that trip i think so when i actually did the modification on the starlink dish when i actually cut it apart i actually used the ecoflow river 2 to actually do that and that's just such a good little power station it's like the perfect size for those situations where you just need portable power enough to power the dremel and the rest of the tools i needed to do that whole install so i'm actually cutting up the starlink using the EcoFlow, but basically using this to charge all my camera gear because this is a pretty long video. So charging extra batteries and stuff while running the Dremel. The EcoFlow did really well today, still 77%. Having portable power when you need it, especially for me, like charging my camera gear being able to do a project here on the table today rather than running extension leads and stuff like that and trying to find USBs and enough of them and this just has everything that I need it to do and it's been running all day and I still have 77% so I use this a lot for a lot of portable 240 power that I need uh, around work and around the farm so you got your three 240 outlets here, USB A ports, USB C, you got your cigarette lighter socket just there with two barrel connectors underneath it gives you your input your watts output all the rest of it here on the screen and your percentage how many hours you have left based on whatever sort of charging you're actually doing and then on the back you can charge this through your car or via solar and also 240 volt as well so nice and light it's got a nice handle on it but i've been using this thing a fair bit and i uh, i rate it i reckon they're really really good Everything will be in the description for EcoFlow if you definitely want to check out their power stations and the range that they have. I'll have uh, yeah, links down in the description for you to check them out.